Hello everyone, welcome to this session. I'm Mr. Zach. I'll be taking you through a topic in book four in physics that is cathode rays and the cathode ray tube. In this topic, we'll be looking at cathode rays and cathode ray production. We'll also look at the cathode ray oscilloscope and also the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope. In this session, uh, by the end of this session, you should be able to explain how cathode rays are produced and what are cathode rays. And as well, you should be able to explain the various properties of cathode rays. Welcome. I'll take you back a little to your chemistry and look at an atom. We know in an atom, we have the inner part, that is the nucleus. And in the nucleus, we have two particles here, that is the protons, which carry a positive charge, they are positively charged, and we have neutrons, which are neutral, they don't carry any charge. Then, around the nucleus, we have the energy levels. And in these energy levels, this is where electrons are. The electrons are kept in position. We know that electrons are negatively charged and the protons are positively charged. And therefore, the two attract each other and that is why the electrons are kept in position in their energy levels. As we move further, as we go to energy levels that are further from the nucleus, then we find that the attraction force between the electrons and the protons reduces. Therefore, that means that these electrons in the first energy level will be more attracted to the nucleus than the electrons in the second energy level. As these energy levels move further from the nucleus, that force reduces. So what keeps this electron in position or in the atom is that attraction force between the electron and the nucleus. If we are able to give this electron enough energy, then it can absorb the energy and break free. Simply, it is going to leave this atom. Therefore, it's very likely, because these electrons at the outermost energy levels, they are loosely held. They are, the attraction force between them and the nucleus is very weak. Then if we give them enough energy, then they easily leave the atom. Now, to, with that knowledge, if we take a metal, on the surface of this metal, we have the atoms. And in this atom, remember, we have the nucleus in each, and we have the electrons in the outermost energy level and also in other levels. If we are able to hit, if we hit this metal, and when we are hitting, then it means we are supplying what we call the heat energy. This heat energy is absorbed by the electrons on the atoms. And if this heat energy is sufficient, that is large enough, then the electrons absorb this heat energy and they use it to break free from this metal surface. And therefore, we'll talk of these electrons having been ejected from the metal surface using what we call heat energy. And when electrons are ejected from the metal surface using heat energy, then we call that thermionic, 
the muonic emission. That is, we have used heat energy, we heat the metal, the electrons on the metal surface absorb this heat energy and they use it to break the attraction force that is attracting them to the nucleus and they break free, they move away from this atom. Then these electrons have been ejected using the heat energy. If you look at the term thermionic, then it comes from the word thermo. And thermo is anything related to heat. And hence the term thermionic emission. We have emitted electrons using heat. And therefore we call this process thermionic emission. Therefore thermionic emission is simply the process through which Electrons are rejected from a metal surface using heat energy. Then if this can happen, then we look at these cathode rays. How can we show the process of thermionic emission? We can use this simple circuit to show the process of thermionic emission. In this case, if you can see the whole diagram, we have a filament which is connected to this circuit here. It is a circuit with a low voltage and on it we have a variable resistor. Then we have a separate circuit. This is a battery which can supply 12 volts. On this circuit, you also have a mini ammeter, and you can see the whole circuit is connected to a plate here. This plate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and therefore it is the anode. The plate on the other side is connected to the negative terminal, and therefore that is our cathode. You can see the two circuits are separate. This is the circuit connected to the filament, and therefore we call it the heating circuit. In the other circuit, there is a gap here, and this gap is encompassed or enclosed with a tube, and this is a glass tube. And this tube is evacuated. And when we talk of evacuation, then evacuation is simply meaning, you know, there are so many evacuations. When people are affected by floods, we evacuate them, we remove them from that place. Then the evacuation you are talking about here is making sure that inside this tube, there is no air particles, there are no other particles. In, that means that this inside here, it is a vacuum. We expect current to flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And therefore, this current, if it was to flow, it will move this way, this way. When it gets to this plate, there is a gap here. So we don't expect to have a complete circuit. So at the point when this switch of the heating current is off, there will be no current that will be registered by the milliameter. When we close this circuit, such that now the filament is heating, and we adjust the current from minimum to maximum, we note, as this plate is being heated, by and by, we start registering small currents, which will be seen through the milliameter, because it will show a deflection. When this switch is off, 
there is no current registered here. When this switch is switched on, due to that heating, there is a current that is being registered here. What is happening? When this filament hits this plate, this metal plate, then electrons are ejected. When these electrons are ejected, remember, electrons are negatively charged, and therefore, they will be attracted towards this plate because it is connected to the positive terminal. As they move towards this plate, then there is a complete circuit, and then the current will be registered in the midi emitter. And this is a clear indication that it is because of this heat that this gap was closed. It is because we heated this metal plate, it emitted electrons through thermionic emission that we get to have a complete circuit here. And in this case, as we increase the heating current, we will also find that the current here is going to increase because a higher current will cause higher heat energy to be produced by the filament. Therefore, more heating will lead to more electrons being ejected. And when you have a higher number of charges flowing, then remember, current is simply the amount of charge flowing per unit time. The quantity of charge flowing by any time. So when you have more charge flowing, then a higher current is registered. So in this case, this is a simple circuit that can be used to demonstrate thermionic emission. In our next part, we'll be looking at the device that we use to produce the cathode rays, that is the cathode ray tube. Uh, so, cathode rays are produced in what we call a cathode ray tube. And here on the whiteboard, we have a diagram of a cathode ray tube showing the main features of the cathode ray tube. In the cathode ray tube, we have the cathode itself, which is supplied uh, with heat through a heater, remember the heating circuit that we uh, saw in the other diagram, and the cathode is connected to the negative terminal of an EHT voltage source. EHT simply meaning extra high tension voltage, and this is simply a high voltage. Then we have the anode and it is cylindrical in nature also and the anode is connected to the positive terminal of the EHT. And we also have a glass tube. You can see everything there is encompassed in a glass tube and this glass tube is evacuated. We said evacuated simply means all the air has been pumped out. There are no other particles in this tube and therefore uh, it is a vacuum. Then we have a fluorescent screen. Fluorescent simply meaning that it can glow, it can fluoresce, it can convert energy to light energy. That is a fluorescent uh, screen, which mostly is a screen coated with phosphor. And phosphor is zinc sulfide. This is an element that will glow. And we'll see why it will glow in this particular cathode ray tube. So in our cathode ray tube, after we heat the cathode, the electrons are produced through thermionic emission. 
after the electrons are produced through thermionic emission, because the anode is highly positive, then it attracts these cathodes and they move towards the anode with a very high speed. And they are being attracted by the anode, so they move towards the anode and due to their high momentum, they will go and hit the screen. And when they hit the screen, the screen will glow. The screen will flourish. The screen grows. Therefore, when we have these electrons, a stream of them moving at a very high speed from the cathode towards the anode, this stream of the electrons is what we call cathode rays. And therefore, simply, cathode rays is a stream of fast-moving electrons from the cathode to the anode. In our next session, we'll be looking at the properties of cathode rays. Thank you.